Cause you're once, twice, three times my baby. What? My lady? That doesn't even make sense. How much time do we have? Shalom! Elio Kim Cohen, Jews News Briefs. I'd like to apologize to everybody for the absence of yesterday's show. I spent about nine hours trying to fix my computer that was broken. Uh, so I finally got it fixed uh, right now. So we're starting up again. It is the 23rd of uh, May 2011, the 19th day of ER on the Hebrew calendar. And uh, as usual, we're here from the Jews News World Headquarters. And I'd like to wish my mom a belated happy birthday, which I did on yesterday's show, which couldn't be uploaded uh, for some reason. Let's see, our sponsor today is Indiegogo.com uh, and what you need to watch there is SurvivorStories.org uh, My friend is really lobbying me to post that site. It's, uh, it's pretty much a Holocaust uh, website. They're trying to get people there to uh, you know, donate, to comment. Uh, it's exciting, so please do that. And also, tonight on my other site, Jewish.Sitech.com, we have an Ask the Rabbi show, which we do every single uh, Monday, 7.15 p.m. Israel time, 12.15 American time. If you've wondered why I haven't mentioned Ralph yet, it's because I gave Ralph the day off because Ralph was in uh, Meron yesterday for Lagba Omer and he had a kicking time up there with 500,000 other Jews, which is uh, truly, truly beautiful. So Ralph will be missed today and hopefully we won't need him. Alright, so let's start off with Jewish history like we always do. Um, today in 1940, Lord Lloyd, <laughs> the Secretary of State for, for Colonies, expressed his opposition to Prime Minister Churchill's plan to arm the Jews of Palestine so he could bring the 20,000 British troops stationed in Palestine home to defend against a possible uh, German invasion. And not much has changed because Lord Lloyd feared the reaction of Arabs to what Churchill saw as a way of providing self-defense for the Nazi menace. Has anything changed in 60 some odd years? Everyone is still terrified of the German react of the um, Arab reaction. All right, so before we do our uh, top story, and it's actually, it actually was yesterday's top story, I'm sort of merging the two shows, uh, we're gonna do a little new segment called Torah Tidbits. So in last week's Parsha, it says that uh, if we follow God's uh, command, five of us will chase away 100, and 100 will chase away 10,000, meaning five to 100 is one in 20, 100 to 10,000 is one in 100. So, why do the numbers increase when they go up? Why do we have more power when there's more numbers? And it's very simple, because the more united Jews are, the more we stay together, we stop having these ridiculous divisions, the more power we have, and the more uh, God comes to our aid. And this can be seen every single time this has occurred uh, throughout Jewish history. Unfortunately, it hasn't occurred much. All right, so let's get to the top story. Um, and please, when you're watching this at home, please watch this on YouTube. When you're clicking the Facebook link, please click it on YouTube, because uh, we're going to pose a question to the audience every single day uh, for our main story because this whole situation has been plaguing me for a few years and I'm very curious to hear what people say. So the top story is that Israel might release uh, 20 killers, terrorists, uh, with blood on their hands, meaning murderers, uh, to get Gilad Shalit. So there's two sides to look at uh, everything obviously and here it's even more apparent. So if we release these killers, how about the families uh, of the victims? You know, if your daughter or cousin or uncle, you know, was murdered, you want these, you know, monsters roaming the streets? Uh, not only that, but they're giving heroes welcome wherever they go? I mean, that's, you know, that's just disgusting. And on the other hand, we have a, a live, you know, captive that's been held uh, in captivity for, I think it's like almost five years now, and um, probably hasn't seen the day of light, uh, the light of day since he's been there. And, um... You know, so really any way that you side on this, uh, the other side will think that you're cruel and heartless. So this is sort of the definition of between a rock and a hard place. The Torah says that we're not allowed to pay an exorbitant ransom um, for a Jewish captive. So uh, I always side with the Torah. I'm hoping that Israel will figure out another way because releasing these monsters has caused over 150 other deaths in Israel. You know, if we, you know, did the normal rational thing, which was just execute terrorists, we would never have to release any terrorists with blood on their hands. So please comment on this. I'm very curious to see what everyone has to say, and I'll read these uh, on the show tomorrow. And by the way, tomorrow's show, I have amazing, amazing proof from our uh, elite fact-checkers here that there was never such a thing as Palestinians. 
Not that we need any more proof, but this is actually something really amazing. It's from 1919 Syria. So my new fact-checking team, I always ask them, are you guys former Mossad agents? And they say, we are not allowed to divulge that. So, <laughs> so yesterday I was in uh, Yerushalayim with my friend eating lunch, and he says that one of his friends refuses to post anything that I uh, do, say, make, whatever, because he thinks I'm part of Shin Bet, which is like the Israeli internal Mossad. Which, the only thing better than being in Shin Bet is having people actually think they are in Shin Bet. So if this rumor is actually getting out there, uh, I think that it's pretty hilarious, and it'll probably do a lot for the ratings on this show. But to my audience, I just want to let you know, I am not Shin Bet. Alright, moving right along to more nauseating news. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, everyone knows that there's a big disagreement now between America and Israel. But the thing that we keep having rammed down our throats for some stupid reason that people keep buying is, oh, it's true that we have some differences, but these are, you know, just, you know, disagreements among friends. That's friends. What we have with America right now is the farthest thing from friendship that I can imagine. How can you have a friend that literally wants you to commit suicide. That's like, you know, sleeping with your girlfriend that's, you know, robbing you blind. I mean, America's not our friend. You know, just because a lot of Jews live in America doesn't mean that the American government has ever been a friend of Israel. You know, sure, we get aid from them, which we don't need. You know, you know what, the, the aid that we get from them, you know, we get like $2 billion a year of military aid. Well, we spend all that money on American stuff. And anything that Israel comes out with, which is way better than anything America comes out with, we share with them. So aid with strings, I'm sorry, but that's not aid. And America is not a friend of the Jewish people right now. They're certainly not a friend of Israel. And um, like I always say, what happens in Israel affects the Jews elsewhere. You can see this on college campuses. You can see this in filthy rags like the New York Times. So people wake up, please. You want to know what a good country is? Here's, here's some interesting news. Canada rejects Obama's 1967 intervention. This guy from Canada, what's his name, Harper, I think? Yeah, Prime Minister Stephen Harper. He flat out went on national TV and said he will support Israel no matter what the consequences. And they just lost a seat on some UN council. I mean, like, who cares? But uh, because he flat out said that I support Israel. And uh, there's a reason why Canada's economy is good right now, why life in Canada is good right now, because God specifically says, I will bless those that bless you, and those that curse you will be cursed. So Canada, bravo. You guys are uh, actually a true friend of Israel. We don't really, we don't really have many out there. <laughs> Ahmadinejad is actually saying that, you know, I'm all about dumping on Europe, but this is just, Ahmadinejad is saying that uh, European countries are using special equipment to force clouds to dump their water on their own Continent. Do you have any idea what, how ridiculous this is? He's saying that we're hoarding, not we, that Europe is hoarding clouds. I mean, I've hoarded gummy bears, popcorn, whatever, but how do you hoard a cloud? This guy's like a month away from getting a nuclear bomb, <laughs> and the world doesn't seem to care. I mean, how irrational and just insane do you have to be to say that someone is hoarding clouds? I mean, this guy has already said he wants to, you know, wipe out the West, he wants to wipe out Israel, and he's delusional enough to be talking about clouds? People, wake up. Alright, so some awesome news, some right-wing radical settlers are setting up settlements uh, over the Green Line, uh, and people are saying it's an attempt to embarrass, embarrass Prime Minister Netanyahu, but I don't think the Israeli government ever needs any help embarrassing themselves, although I will say that I'm uh, very proud of Prime Minister Netanyahu's, uh, what he did in America. I always like to, um, you know, lash out at a lot of the policies that he makes, but what he did in America, uh, on the surface looks good, who knows what was promised otherwise, but I'm liking, uh, I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt right now, so I'm very, uh, you know, in favor of what happened there, but setting up more settlements is that's what we need to be doing. You know what is, uh, this is like the biggest housing crisis that we've ever had in Israel because this government refuses to build homes for the people that are multiplying the fastest, which is insane. Uh, uh, 
So, uh, we all know that there's a group called Hamas out there. Well, listen to what Hamas now says. They want to now come back into the fold of peace talks, but they only want to discuss 1948 lines. So as the world is trying to push us back to 1967 lines, <laughs> Hamas is saying, no, 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 no. Let's, take it, let's kick it back another notch. Let's go back another 19 years to 1940. <laughs> what? What is this charade? I mean, the only good thing about this charade of peace talks is that I will always have a show uh, Shem, to do every day because just the nonsense of this book. You know, what's next? You know, 1850 lines when there wasn't even a state? You know, back to the time of the Canaanites? I mean, well, what is next for the world to latch onto that is just so idiotic and hateful to the Jews that it actually makes sense to them? Um, so, uh, apparently 1948 is going to be the new... You know what this is like? It's like the Holocaust. It started at 6 million. Now a lot of people say it's only 4 million. Pretty soon it's just going to be, you know, half a dozen. I mean, don't you see what's going on in the world? Can't you just see how much the world hates the Jews that, like, this all makes sense to them? They can just throw years out there, oh, we're going to go back to those borders. Oh, you know, June of 1956 is going to be next. Wake up, people! Don't you see this happening, like, all the time, every single day? <sighs> okay. All right, for our final story, um, Turkey is now warning Israel over the new Gaza flotilla. They're saying that um, it should be known that Turkey will give a necessary response to any, any repeated act of provocation by Israel on the high seas. Isn't sending a flotilla from your country to, to break our legal blockade the definition of a provocation? Can't you people see this? What these morons have to say? And like, the world news picks up on? Turkey is sending a boat to Israel. That's called a provocation. Now they're saying that they're warning us against any provocations? This is what we need to be doing. Uh, we need to get on national TV, international TV, and say if any boat comes past this mark in the Mediterranean, this is what we're going to do to you. That's a strong country that has pride in any sense of rationality would do. Alright, it's good to be back. I was uh, very uh, lonely not putting a show up there because this show is actually going fast. We've had over 1,400 hits just on YouTube alone. It's probably 10, 15 times more than that on Facebook. So please, please watch... Uh, what? So, Shalom? Ah, uh, happy blank gift birthday, Ima. Uh, I did get you a gift. I thought my love and support would be enough. You told me you don't want any gifts anymore. <laughs> you changed your mind? I didn't get that memo, Ima. Okay, I love you. We'll talk later. Happy birthday. Man, how does she always know that's my show? <sighs> Make sure you thank your Ima. She's done a lot for you, I'm sure. All your parents. There's a reason why Kibbutz Ab Aim uh, is a big mitzvah. We, you know, we take a lot of things for granted in this world. If we all appreciated what we had and where we came from, you know, the Jewish people would be a lot better off. Anyway, so please watch this video. Please post this video. Share it with all your friends. We're getting great comments. Some girl said she has a crush on me. Someone else said that I'm an idiot and pretty much everything in between. So please keep helping us out. Our goal is to get 100,000 people watching this every single day. We already have an interview tomorrow with a, a very big Jewish uh, website, jewishreporter.com. They're very interested to see what you know is going through our minds with our show here. So please help us out. We can really get this viral. This could be something very special. It could unite a lot of Jews with truth. Because remember, it's not news unless it's Jews news. Shalom.